Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I sit you down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. Now we have 675. 700 and I'll shake. No. I thought we were negotiating. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to advise you to reject it and take a chance and gamble and place the same goods into a local auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more oh, money yeah, there. You got them on 40, you got it on 40. Today the show comes to you from Watford in Hertfordshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They've brought along their treasures. They are determined to do business. They want to walk away with cash in their hand or gamble and go to auction, but either way, they want the real deal. Alison Chapman is first up with a 1950s watch on her table. They've brought in this lovely timepiece, and it's by Jaeger Le Coot, yeah. one of the top makers. So how did you come by it? Um, it's not actually my watch, it belongs to my mother, and uh, it belonged to her uncle, so it's been passed down through the family. Okay, well the date of the watch is around about 1950, mm -hmm. so did he get it as a special present, or...? I, I'm not sure how he came by it, but he may well have bought it for himself. Well, before I get my money out, yep. it just feels so nice, doesn't it? I mean, look at the thickness. It's a good... I, it's I like lovely. it. And it's quality, and quality always sells. It's had a bit of water damage to the face. That would not have been that colour. The glass cover has been replaced at some point. I have got the original as well. The okay. original glass cover. Excellent. Right. Money on the table, Mabel. <laughs> so how much is it going to cost me mm. to tempt it off you? I don't know how much you want to put on the table. 200. No, I think it's worth more than that. I think my mum would be very disappointed if I went with that. 300. Um, I think we'd like a bit more than that, please. We'd like. Mm. Well, I'm Do you have any idea of its mom. value? I have a vague idea, yes. Can you share that with me? Because I'm sitting here wanting to help you, wanting to buy it. It would be more than £300. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving anything away. <laughs> but you want to, don't you? You want to I help do, me out, yeah, actually. I, do. I can see. I do. I can see you'd be well, happy for me to have it. Go? <laughs> well, I'm going to go another hundred. So that's 400 on the table. Monsieur Dickinson. Well, Jaeger Le Coutre. <laughs> Are you trying to say you've got one? I have the grand reveal, uh, but um, <laughs> Jaeger Le Coutre, a wonderful handmade Swiss watch. That's from the 50s. Yes. You're on the money there, Alison. I am going to say that. Three to five hundred pounds is our auctioneer's estimation. We're right in there at four hundred mm. pounds. So is it worth any more? Well, I think if it was 18 carat, aside from the fact that it's gold weight, that really sets it ahead of yes. the game. Yes. And that would put it into the sort of 12, 1400 year yes. coot. Yeah. It's nine carat. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's nine carat, but it's vintage. It's 1950s. Go away. I don't want you here anymore. Go on. Go on. You see, is it... <laughs> Don't is, listen to him, Is Stephanie. it worth Please more, Stephanie? This is what you've got to say to yourself. There is a possibility that it could bring more at auction, but I'm not going to take that responsibility. I'm going to leave that with you, my dear, to make uh. that responsibility. <laughs> good offer, good item. OK. Is there uh, any more to come? Well, I reckon that... That is quite a strong offer. I like it. I haven't hidden that from you. No, you I haven't. I'd like to go home with it and I can give it a good home. Preferably my wrist. But that said, I am a businesswoman and I'm never, or I try never to be, foolish with my money. OK. I think the offer's a fair deal and I'd like to deal with it. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> that is great, that's great. I'm, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> 
smiles all round. Let's hope the smiling continues over on Henry Nichols' table. David and auctioneer Tom Keane have joined them to see what all the fuss is about. Susan, let me ask you, why have you brought me in a coffee table? Um, it's not a coffee table, it's got a little secret inside. Has it? It has. OK, well, should we have a look then? Yes. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Uh -huh. Obviously, what we've got here is we've got a cased canteen of silver-plated cutlery. Yes. Um, that looks like it's never been used. Hardly ever. Just for special occasions. OK. And what's the history of it? Um, my father bought it for my mother for their 25th wedding anniversary. Right. OK. I would guess, looking at it, the way that it's made mm -hmm. is that we've got something that dates to probably the 1970s, maybe early 80s. Would I be about right? Yeah, that's right. OK. We can tell that because if we look at the top here, mm -hmm. which has got some very nasty scratches on it, um, we can tell it's been lacquered. Right. It's got a tall leather top to it, but it does have some nasty scratches. Now, how did they happen? Uh, the cat made its bed on there and slept <laughs> there for about 10 years. So it used to make its little bed and scratch the edges. Fantastic. <laughs> well, just as well it's not an antique piece, because that would be quite, quite bad. Indeed. So let's have a look at the contents. OK. This wonderful ladle here, mm -hmm. silver plated, and this is what they call King's Pattern Cutlery. Yes. OK. Now, we've got on the back here um, the EPNS um, mark, A1 plate, Sheffield, England. So it was made in Sheffield. Mm -hmm. Now, the knives that we've got there, they've all got stainless steel blades. OK. I mean, it, it is in remarkably good order. There's a little bit of spotting and pitting mm -hmm. um, to the ladle here. But other from that, it's actually in really, really good condition. Yes. Tom, a large silver-plated canteen of cutlery, 12-piece mm -hmm. setting. What do you think about it? I like the 12-piece setting, I like the quality of it. I don't like the case, though. Right. But uh, having said that, there's a lot going on with it and it's a lot for the money, I think. I'm going to say it's cheap as chips, really, because where are you going to get a 12-piece setting for little money? I mean, the independent values have said 100 to 150. Well, mm. there must be 200 pieces there. It's certainly more than 50p a piece. Yes. Um, I mean, what are you thinking about? Well, this? I'm, I'm a bit stronger. I'm at 150 to 250. I've noticed in the last few months the uh, cutleries that's been coming back in the auction rooms. You're pretty confident. Let's see what our dealer puts on the table, see if he sees the value in it. We'll make you an offer. OK. 20, 40, 60, 80, 90 pounds. How does 90 pounds seem? No. No, I'm obviously, I can tell, I'm a long way away from you what are. you're hoping. I'll put another 20 on the table, but I think that's as far as I want to go. OK. How do you think? No, that's still not enough. 110 quid. Still no money. No. I'm going to go in there and tell our seller, what are you waiting for? Let's get off to the auction where we'll get more money than that. 110 is probably the most that I really want to pay. OK. Oh, here's David. Well, Henry, the Duke is saying cheap as chips. Mm -hmm. Forget about the case. You can throw that out. Take the cutlery out. You've got uh, a 12-piece setting. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how many pieces, but we, we think there's probably, what, 150, 200 pieces yeah. there. Yeah. So what you need to do is say, Henry, no, mate. <laughs> we are off to auction, and I think that's 200 quid's worth of someone's money, especially in a retail sense. Thank you, David. Thank you. Well, if it was solid silver, I might offer you a little bit more. OK. But unfortunately, I think David's right. I think you'll do better at auction with it. Okay. Um, for me, 110, that's it. OK, I'll go to auction then. But OK, thank Susan, it's been a pleasure. Well, the shaking house, Tom, it's over to you to the sale room. Yeah. I still think that is ridiculously cheap. It's certainly worth, in my book, m worth more than 110 quid. Yes, definitely, definitely. Tom Keane is sure the cutlery will fly out the cell room. Is he right? Don't you have posture in the pot, is you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's a £150 reserve. Mm -hmm. Are there like-minded people in the sale room? who are looking to have a dinner party. Hopefully. And use posh cutlery. Let's find out. It's coming up now. Can you see the silver-plated King's Pattern cutlery? 118. Was it worth a whole lot? £100. £100 for it. 
tank up at 100 pounds, I'll take 110, 100 pounds, I'll take 110, 110, 110, 120, 130 down there, 130, 140, 150, 150, 160. The bid here at 150, down 160, 150, down 160. It's a posh down, area, they have dinner parties. Indeed. And 150, all done. Your bid, sir, 150, 174. Gavel has just gone down at 150 pounds. Take away the deduction of 15%, it's just under 128 pounds. Okay. Are you satisfied? Yes. I'm happy. What will you spend this vast sum of money on? Um, I'm going on holiday in a few weeks, so okay. I'll take that to spend. OK, where are you going to? Goa. Going to Goa, southern India. That will go quite a long way over there. <laughs> Have a lovely holiday. Real deal, £127.50, just under £128. That was the real deal. Back in the den with Jan Keane and breakfast is served. Yep. Hello. Well, I can clearly see what you've bought in today, a uh, revolving dome top hot plates. And would you like to tell me where you acquired it from? We acquired it a few years ago um, from an, an antique shop. My, it spoke to my husband. It was something he liked the look of. Right. Um, it's something that we get out every Christmas and yes. put the Christmas sweeties in. But other than that, we don't use. It's very nice quality. It's got this... Lovely revolving top. It's a bit of a shame that it is, in fact, missing its liner, mm -hmm. which would have held all the food. You wouldn't actually put the food yeah. in the dome. And on nice poor feet, nicely chased all round the edge with these lovely handles. But I was very pleased to see that it was by Walker and Hall, who were the one of the foremost platers right. of the... I think it's about 1900, 1910. Oh, right, OK. And it's a nice quality item. So from here we go, I put down a little bit of money and we see where we go. OK. If I put down a 50, Ooh. is that going to tempt you? No. I'm nowhere no. near tempting no, no, you, we're clearly. Near. No. Right, OK, well, you have to start somewhere. Absolutely, time so in the water. So we started with a pink one and I'll put down £70. Pounds. It is missing its liner, which I feel has quite a big bearing on the object. Well, that's a very useful part of it because you have this grid, this liner, where your bacon, your 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 breakfast items, that your kidneys that might have rested in that, uh, uh, <laughs> use that as a sieve, you know. Right. Um, it's still a nice example. Now, we have two schools of thought here. One is 60 to 80 pounds because of the present climate of silver and silver plate in the sale rooms. The other one, the auctioneer, he's more buoyant. He is saying one to 200 pounds. That's a nice large example, and I would have thought it was worth a good 100 quid. Well, we've both heard mm. what David's got to say. I'm going to take away the 20, and I'm going to put down another 50 to make it 100 pounds. What do you think about that, Lynn? Will we go any, you... any more? Seeing as I'm an old softy, supposing we say 120, I think I'm I'm really there now. Um, is he, he, it really spoke to him. I think he would really... Okay. For your husband's sake, I'm doing this. <laughs> For your husband, I, hope he, I hope he's listening. I'll put that 10 down. I'll say 130, and that has to be my final offer. I think we'll go with that. We can shake on it. You're I think, happy. I think so. Well, thank you. He very might much, divorce Lynn. me. <laughs> At least it's out the thank, way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very you very much. much. Coming up, I'm going to say snatch his hand up on this on this occasion. <laughs> You see, he has to agree with me sometimes. sometimes yes. <laughs> David and Ian are of the same mind, but is it enough to convince our seller? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. We're in Watford and Ian Towning has a silver box on his table. But will it sparkle enough for his liking? Silver cigarette box? Where did you get it? I used to work uh, in a care home as activities and I got friendly with one very, very indomitable lady. And when she died, she left loads of things to me. So I kept that 
and it's been sitting in my drawers at home. And I just suddenly thought, oh, well, I might as well come here and see what it's worth. And see whether you can squeeze me for some money. <laughs> very, very gently. This is quite, quite a nice box, really. It has got a damaged end. I don't know whether you know, it's split. No. Okay, and a few dents. And the design on top, even though it looks as though it is like initials, I think it's N and something, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you could get away with it uh, as being a pattern. Right. You know, so that's quite good. But, you know, because people don't like things that have been initialed. It's very hard to sell things that are initialed. And I've looked the date, and it's London 1923. Oh! And should I buy this? What are you going to do with the money? I was hoping to sell that and yes. get some fillers for the lines around my face. Oh, OK. But obviously that's not going to run to that, so I'll perhaps get my roots done and buy myself something nice to eat this evening. Oh. So, how's 50 pounds? It's interesting, but the parking was very expensive and I've got a lot and of I've roots to do. And I've got to pay for it. And you've got a lot of roots to do. Where do you see my roots being done? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good offer. <laughs> I think it's a very, very nice offer. But again, I need, I need some work done. <laughs> a tricky one, the average independent value in auctioneers, they're all around that 40s, 50s. Is that it, Ian? Well, Would you put another tenner? Well, the lady and I have been just about to discuss that. because She said she needs her work done. Get a tenner in. So I uh, thought, I'm going to say snatch his hand up on this, on this occasion. <laughs> you see, he has to agree with me sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, 60 pounds and we have a deal. We have a deal. We have a deal. Thank you very much. A Thank pleasure. you. A pleasure. It's off to the salon for Madeline with her winnings. Over with Jan and her next lot is standing tall. Well. Can you fill me in on this rather spectacular lady? I bought it from a, a friend of mine, a dealer. Must have been about 10, 20, 15 years ago. Right. And he said it's 18th century. So that's only what I know. Right. Did he um, specialise in Oriental? No. Or? No. Because my gut feeling is that it is certainly 20th century and could even be 30s, 50s. That's my gut feeling. Mm. I believe it is bronze because she is heavy and she's got this long middle finger, which I think was indicative of probably a goddess, a goddess of what, mm. I'm not sure. But that doesn't matter. I think she's got a great look and just a sort of contemporary feel that people like if they've got modern or old in their flat. Mm -hmm. I don't think yeah. it matters. I think she's very, very decorative. So I think we'll start by putting 50, 100, 150 in the pink red is not You're not enough. impressed. No, no. You're I've not paid impressed. Much more. Did you? Right. Yes. So if we say round it off to 200, how does that seem? Seem better, but not enough. No. Still. I will put down 250. And then that leaves me a little profit to make. And I don't know how you feel about that. So we how... You need, need a bit more. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. Another pink one, and I think that does, at 300, have to be my final offer. We have a deal now. We have a deal. Yeah. Happy to shake hands? Happy. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And it's found a good home. Hello, my name's Alison. A porcelain box has landed on Alison's table, yes. but will its design appeal to her girly side? So, you brought this piece to me, which is a lovely... China box. We have a lid. I and believe I it's hand-painted. Yeah, hand-painted, definitely. And it's got um, a luster. Yeah. It's pearlized, so it, it has this shimmering 
lustrous effect. I love the It looks like colors. kind of Wedgwood luster they used to do. It the does. Kind of, yes. yes, definitely. It's by Minton's. I think it's one of the good yeah, manufacturers. Yeah, very respectable uh, factory, so quite happy with all of that. I think it's lovely. I love the colours. Thank you. Yeah, it has a lot of eye appeal, doesn't it, really? It has. It has. Right, money on the table. Mm -hmm. 20. I like, the, I like the pink. Well, we all like £50 notes. I know I do, but I don't really feel that they're mm. for this piece, I'm afraid. I think it's worth more than that. 35 And that's about it for me, I'm afraid. I can't take that because it's, I'm literally completely out of, of what I really pay. You're going to have to let me in on what you paid. £100. A hundred pounds. Yes. What are you expecting today for this piece? I will be happy to get the money I spend on it. Well, then you won't be getting that hundred pound off me, I'm afraid. I mean, even if I put an extra tenner down, that's forty-five. Would that tempt you? <sighs> You're not sure, are you? I, I, even if I would lose some money, I'd, I'd rather you to get it if you put another five pounds. Even if you lose. Is that for you got a deal? 50 quid? Yes, even if I lose the money. All right, then, that's great. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. very pleased to have it. Thank you. Coming up. Put more money on the table, Oh, you man. are, you are <laughs> hard work. So, will Henry do as he's told? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Watford in Hertfordshire. Items are still rolling into the dealer's den, and with no time to lose, we're with Henry for his next lot. What have you brought in for me today? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's honest. Something shiny and silver. It belonged either to my ex, well, not ex, my deceased father-in-law or mother-in-law, I don't know which one. Right. My sister-in-law gave it to my husband for me, and I've had it since. Fantastic. And where have you kept it? <laughs> In the sideboard, right at the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you haven't polished it. No. OK, well, what we've got here, we have got a Victorian silver tea caddy. Mm -hmm. OK. And the silver marks, we've got the maker's name, uh, we've got the lion passant to tell us it's silver, we've got the leopard's head, which tells us that it was made or assayed mm -hmm. in London, and then we've got the date letter here, which is a T. Now, that date letter would date it to around about 1894, Obviously, the lid comes off, there goes the tea. Now, in the 19th century, tea was a very, very expensive commodity. So, therefore, if you had a silver tea caddy to keep your tea in, it showed that you were a person of great wealth. Yeah, rich. <laughs> Why are you getting rid of it? Because I have so many junk, if you like, in my sideboard, in my display cabinet. OK, so where are we going to go? I think what we're going to do... I'm going to offer you 20, 40, 60, 80, and we're wicked 90 old pounds. <laughs> How does 90 pounds seem? No, it's not enough. All right, well, let's see what we can do. Let's take that 10 away and let's put 20, 40 down. So that's £120. And I think I'm quite close to where I want to be with it. All right, then, let's see how close. Put Ooh. more money on the table, oh, young man. Oh, you are, you are <laughs> hard work. Oh, no. here's David. OK. Right. Let me tell you, Aisha, what the independent valuers and the auctioneers say and what I think. Well, the best estimation comes from our independent valuers and they say 100 to 150. Um, auctioneer, I think, is a little bit less than that. He's slightly under the 100. So, 120 is quite a good offer. Mm -hmm. You may get more at auction, but that is safe, and I'm not sure you'll get a lot more. No. Thank you, David. Well, the maestro I has think spoken. I put 20 pounds, and I'll go. I'll tell you what, I'll meet you in the middle, and I'll put another 10 down, and that's 130 pounds. Yeah, it's all right, then. OK, Aisha, thank you <laughs> thank very you. much indeed. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure, too. <laughs> 
<laughs> well played, Aisha. But has Henry offered over the odds, and will he be able to sell it on? Find out later. Risky decanter. Right. Cut glass, silver collars, and fairly modern. 1973. And how many times have you used them? We used to use them quite a lot at Christmas time when people had, it was a regular thing to have a um, bar in the home. We use them then. Yes, because when you look at the tops, they have been well, it's well been used. used. Yes. <laughs> That's the husband's fault. Your husband's fault. <laughs> and why are you selling them? Well, I'm going on a cruise next year. A bit of extra money. <laughs> Rather than... You know, sitting there doing absolutely doing nothing. nothing. Well, they're looking pretty good and they're looking pretty clean. Well, they have me, been clean you know. before I come here. Let's see how much I have to pay for them. <laughs> so, 50 pounds. I was hoping for a bit more. You've gone oh. a bit more. I want more. Yeah, please. Okay. Let's say 100 pounds. Well, here comes David. Um. Now, normally at this stage, Mary, what lovely eyes you've got, Mary. <laughs> normally at this stage, I have a bit of fun with Ian and say, you want more? I think £100 is a fair and good offer. 40 to 60, 60, 70 is what they are saying. So I'm going to say, thank you, Ian. We don't ask for more. We say no more on this occasion. <laughs> OK. You accept my offer for £100? I think it's an excellent offer Thank and you. I'm very, very happy with it. Thank you. Shall we shake on that? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Will Alison score with this giant collection? Or Larry for short. Right, well, we've had a brief look at them. This looks like it's probably going to be the oldest one, 1948. Yeah. And then these look like big club matches and they're all football programs. Correct. Presumably, I mean I could be completely wrong, no. I imagine you've gone to every match. Have no you? I haven't, no. You haven't. I'm not that old for the 40s one. Oh yes, I yeah, do yeah. apologise. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Uh, the 60s onwards I've actually been to. The previous ones from that I bought from a, from a, a specialist uh, program dealer. So you've brought this one yep. from your mate. Yeah. What did you pay for that? Two pounds. Two pounds. Yeah. Now that's useful to me so yeah. I can I'll make give, a, I'll give you a, an educated stab yeah. at yeah. what they might be worth. So why are we selling them? Why are you selling them? Well, just to turn them into... They're just sitting there getting dusty and just turn them into In money. Wardrobe. Yeah, just turn them into money. So what, have you given up the addiction of collecting them? Or? No, I've still got two, 3,000 programmes. It's too many. Uh, she's given me some chips. Right. right. So you acknowledge, the, you acknowledge you've got a problem. She said, turn them into money. I said, yeah, not a bad idea. Well, there's 20 quid. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Don't waste my time. All yours. How? Oh. <laughs> £30, Larry. No. I won't miss about. I want £60 for them. Right, so really, you, you're You offer gonna... me 60 we do a deal. <clears throat> if not, I'll go to auction. OK. Well, I'm not going to offer you 60, not because I don't think they're worth it, right. but they're not something that I would really... What's your best excited. deal? What's your best deal? Well, I was gradually getting there, Larry. Right. But now you're putting me under pressure. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so... With respect, 50 is the bare, bare, bare minimum. Right. I'd rather keep my paper in my money than in your football right. programmes, right, if I'm truthful. Is that all right? Yeah, I get, because you get a wider audience, don't you? Just well, I hope these fly at auction. Hopefully. And I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Larry. Thanks for your time. Thank you. It's a red card for Alison and she's out of the game. Off to auction you go, Larry. There's a reserve of 40 quid. Unless they bring the 40 quid or more, yeah. they're going back. I'll just look at his wife's face. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a... <laughs> He's not happy. OK, we need to sell. Let's see if we can get these away. The reserve is 40 quid. Are there any footy fans here? We're about to find out. Coming up over there. 
release programs here, especially be 50 pounds or not, 50 pounds, 30 pounds to go, minute 30 pound, 30 pound a minute, 30 pound, be 32, 30 pound, take two, 32, 35, 38, you get a bid. 38, 40, 40, 42, 45, 45, 48, 50, 52, 50. 55, mm. 55, 58, 60, two, at 60 pounds, be there at 60 pounds, give me 62, at 60 pounds, take two, we done. At 60 pounds, something all done and going, at 60 pounds, your last chance sold, 60 pounds, on 63, 60 pounds. Gavel's just gone down at 60 pounds for those musty old programs. <laughs> They're <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> take away the commission, leaves you with 51. What are you going to do with the money? I've got to think about it. Well, I've seen your missus. She's waving. I've got no she, chance. She's very pleased with the result. Take her out for a slap up me with a 51 quid. I'll think about it, David. If she's a good, if she's a good girl. Don't be mean. <laughs> she's got 3,000 programmes to look after at home. Yeah, exactly. OK, on the day, real deal was here, 60 quid, and he's taking his missus out for a, for a nice slap up meal. That's the real deal. Coming up, there are fireworks in the dealer's den. I kept my word, and I've given you what you asked for. Would you not be prepared, just on principle, to put that extra 25 quid in? Because I think they're worth it, Ian. Uh, I've just done 25 I know that. The extra that they didn't ask for. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Watford in Hertfordshire. It's Hi, over to Ian for the last Hi, deal Karen. of the day, okay. where he has a pair of silver candlesticks that will surely make his face light up. Could you tell us a little about them? Uh, yeah, they belong to my neighbour. Um, she passed away about 18 months, uh, months ago, um, and her brother gave them to me as a gift because um, she was a very close friend of ours. Very generous gift. Yep. <laughs> so why are you selling them? They don't really fit in my house, they're not really, um, my house is fairly sort of contemporary, so they don't really go on the fireplace. You mean you don't like cleaning silver yeah. by the look of it? <laughs> they haven't been cleaned though. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> well, they're London, uh, 1973, Okay. by Leslie Durbin, mm -hmm. a very famous silversmith. What I do like is they're different. Mm -hmm. You know, the salmon jump leaping, very unusual. Normally, I wouldn't go for something so modern. Right. You know, because it's not uh, the sort of thing I would deal in. But because they're unusual, they're in a, in a way, they could be going to somebody who's interested in fishing or mm -hmm. sporting, something of that nature. So, do you have any idea of their value? Uh, not really. I know they were bought as an investment. I know she had them as an investment. So, they are obviously worth something. So she like must that. have bought them in the 70s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When and they were them first made. Yeah. Mm. OK. So... Mm. <laughs> 50. 100. 150. 200. 250. 300. 350. 400. 450. 500. 550. 600. I don't know. They're very modern. <laughs> 600. David's coming in. <laughs> well, well, first of all, I'm pleased to see that a reasonable amount of money has been put on the table. There's two estimations here, 450 to 650, 6 to 8. I realise that these are probably a bit late for Ian, but yeah. he, he's gone for them because of the style, because of the look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the look is ultra, ultra smart. And so I think there is great potential with those but I do think they're worth a little bit more money, but Ian will tell you yes or no. <laughs> Thank you. There's 600 on the table. I'll go to 650, uh, which I think is leaving space for me to do something with them because they're quite modern for my shop, really. But at 650, I think it's a very good offer. Are you not happy with 650? Six seven five. Six seventy five. I'd gladly make it uh, six hundred and uh, seventy five. Okay, so that's twenty and five. So now we have six hundred and seventy five. What do you want on the table? <laughs> okay. Um, six seven five. Six seven five. Uh, do you want a calculator? <laughs> <laughs> seven hundred and I'll shake. No, you agreed to 675. And I kept my word and I've 
given you what you asked for. If you want to do that, take it to auction, take the gamble with the pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> 700 and I'll shake. But has she pushed Ian too far? No, he agreed to 675. And I kept my word and I've given you what you asked for. If you want to do that, take it to auction, take the gamble with the pleasure. <laughs> what you're saying is you really want that little bit more money. I understand what Ian is saying, because Ian said, OK, I'll give them the 25 quid. You're now saying, well... Now you're getting greedy. Well, well, I suppose it's a, it is a... It, that's perhaps not the word. Would you not be prepared, just on principle, to put that extra 25 quid in? Because I think they're worth it, Ian. Yeah, uh, I've just done 25 pounds. I know pounds that. Extra that the lady asked for. I understand Now she's that. wanting another 25 pounds. <laughs> I and then she'll want another 25 pounds. No, well, I, no, I said I would shake. I, I, ex <laughs> I accept what you're you saying. Know, and, and that's I, not on. I, I think because we are in a professional business where someone makes an offer, this is what happens in this game, and we kind we of touch hands it. and we do oh, that. Okay. But at the same time, this is not a professional, and so I know I, I know that you are perhaps a little bit aggrieved because, in, to your way of thinking, I've said, "Well, I'm, I'm I've come up to your terms. Yes. I'm going to say, don't even worry about it. Get the other twenty-five quid there. She'll go away happy. You spent another twenty-five pounds, but believe you me, it will be well spent." <laughs> I just disagree with the way in which it was done. Okay. If, if you'd said give me an extra 50 pounds, I would have done so. But then you said to me, give you, me 25 pounds more. I thought we were negotiating. No, you said, give me another 25, which I have done. Okay. okay. So I have kept my word, and I think you should honor your word of taking the offer, personally. Or you can take it to auction. Take the gamble. Okay, we have a deal. It's a deal, 675. Okay. Now that you agreed to it, I will give you that extra 50 pounds. I just wanted you to accept the fact that what you did was wrong. Thank you. So now we can shake on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll okay. go for the next time. He's a bit of a devil when he gets his patty up, isn't he? He's far okay. sparklier than me. Okay. And at the end of the day, you did the gentlemanly thing. You put the extra 25 quid in. I understand the principle, but I still believe they are a great item. And I'm they sure are. they will be successful yeah. for you. No, and I you, like them. And you go away with the extra money. And that's what we call the real deal. <laughs> Oh, you're so naughty, Ian. But Karen got what she wanted in the end. Our dealers have handed out nearly £2,000. But what have they made? 300 Could you what? put another 20 I don't really want to put another 20 I'll tell you what, I'll meet you in the middle, and that's £130. Henry may regret compromising with Aisha because after paying top whack for the tea caddy, it's still sitting in his shop. I think it's lovely. I love the colours. Thank you. Yeah, it has a lot of eye appeal, doesn't it, really? He has. He has. Alison was keen to keep hold of the Minton's porcelain box, but an eager customer spotted it in her shop and made her a generous offer. In fact, it was double the price she paid. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And it's found a good home. A private client purchased the bronze figure as a birthday present for her husband for £350. <laughs> Ian's had a cracking day. Those are delightful decanters but they are what they are, and there's not a great deal of age. Ian can sell them, he can make a profit. And David turned out to be right. Ian made a profit selling the glass decanters for the great price of £250. Because we are in a professional business where someone makes an offer, this is what happens in this game, and we kind we of touch hands and we do oh, that. Okay. Ian sold the silver candlesticks to a fellow dealer. The dealer was so besotted he offered a massive £1,150, leaving Ian to reel in a whopping £450 profit. The drinks are on Ian. <laughs> We've had a cracking day. There's been some beautiful goods turn up today, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what we like to see on the programme. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.